This news update is brought to you by Say hello to Carol. Carol talks for a living from morning till night. So she relies on Flo's crystal clear home phone service brought to her through Flo's 100% fiber to the home network. It keeps her in the know. And because she bundles her mobile broadband and TV services, she enjoys huge savings. So she can enjoy much more for much less. So visit any Flo retail outlet, call 1-800-804-2994 or visit discoverflow.co to find out more. One of a kind connection. This is how we flow. It's Wednesday, September the 14th, 2016, and this is your Barbados Today Morning News Update. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. Topping the news at this hour, Barbados' illegal gun problem is in no way unique, says regional security expert Francis Forbes, who has revealed figures showing that the large number of illegal firearms on the streets is a Caribbean-wide trend. The executive director of the CARICOM Implementation Agency for Crime and Security, Impacts, said recent seizures of large weapon caches, new technology guns, and citizens trained in advanced terrorism tactics present unnatural hazards that add to threats to the well-being of Caribbean citizens. He highlighted the issue at a Caribbean and Latin American panel discussion on regional coordination for hazards and security at the Radisson Aquatica Resort. It is alarming. 2,178 murders, 1,596 rapes, 10,227 robberies, 2,488 illegal guns seized alongside 32,000 32, 364 rounds of ammunition. Between 2006 and last year, 20,000 illegal firearms were removed from our streets. But even as we celebrate this success, we must remind ourselves that currently there are polymer weapons, very difficult to trace, modular weapons, and 3D printed weapons. There is no doubt that this is indeed a man-made disaster of epic proportions unfolding slowly but surely. I now invite you to reflect upon the following. The current terrorism threat picture takes into account the return of foreign terrorist fighters, the nexus between terrorism and organized crime, the potential spread of a radical ideology, and the introduction of advanced military tactics and technology. The issue of these new type weapons now demands a significantly greater attention. Government is looking to make it easier for shopkeepers, vendors and local event planners to buy and sell alcoholic beverages, particularly at high volume times such as crop over. Minister of International Business, Commerce, Industry and Small Business Development, Donville Innes, revealed yesterday that a new administration and a liquor licensing act was currently in the works and that it will form part of a comprehensive policy paper that is scheduled to go before cabinet by January 15th next year. The recommendation arose out of a near two hour stakeholders meeting yesterday afternoon which discussed ways of improving the current liquor licensing regime which was described as too frustrating time-consuming, onerous, fragmented, and lacking in business friendliness. It is therefore being recommended that the system should no longer be administered by the magistrate's court, but by a liquor licensing board that is due to be established within Ennis's ministry. Of course, in order to avoid the bunching up and, and, and frustration that may occur kind of year end, is that the licenses be done on an anniversary basis. So if you apply for a liquor license on July 15th, or be obtained a liquor license on July 15th this year, it shall remain in force until July 14th next year. So that people don't have to wait till the end of the year. When you get a license in November, then you go back in December uh, to go through the same process again. So staggering the, 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 the licensing period certainly would create tremendous ease to the administrators of the system, as well as those who are the beneficiaries of the appropriate licenses. Uh, the, issue. the same problems which have been plaguing residents across water starved St. Joseph are now creating turmoil for at least one group of primary school students in that rural parish, with some angry teachers now threatening to take matters into their own hands. 
Yesterday, only two days into the new school term, classes were abruptly suspended at the St. Joseph Primary School due to the crippling impact of drip taps. A team from Barbados today was just in time yesterday afternoon to witness the early release of the students into the care of the angry parents or guardians around 1.30 p.m. And while Principal Clover Allen sought to put on a brave face while reporting that everything at the school was fine and that there was a smooth start to the new school term, both parents and teachers openly vented their frustrations, saying they were totally fed up with the conditions. Some teachers have even threatened to walk off the job today if the problem is not solved. In sports, now West Indies coach Phil Simmons has been fired. In confirming the decision yesterday, the West Indies Cricket Board explained that in recent times, based on the public pronouncements of the coach and the approach internally, the board had identified differences in culture and strategic approach. The WICB therefore thanked Simmons for his contribution and wished him the best in his future endeavours. Simmons who moved into the role after last year's World Cup, following a spell with Ireland, was informed about the termination of his contract yesterday, shortly before the T20 squad was due to fly to the United Arab Emirates to play Pakistan and just six months after West Indies won the World T20. There's regional and international news after this short break. We're back with news from the region now. A 25-year-old man in Trinidad who's charged with sexually assaulting an 82-year-old bedridden woman has been denied bail. Akim Raymond of Upper Laventille Road appeared before a Port of Spain magistrate yesterday morning charged with the offence. The elderly woman reportedly suffers from Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. Raymond is due back in court on October the 10th. We turn now to the murder of a Guyanese teacher who was stabbed to death in the Bahamas. The Bahamian police say they are following some good leads and expect to make an arrest shortly. Following the brutal murder of a Guyanese woman who worked in the Bahamas as a high school teacher, Assistant Police Commissioner of the Royal Bahamas Police Force, Stephen Dean, told Our News Bahamas that his team of investigators are vigorously working to bring to justice the responsible party in the murder of 35-year-old Marisha Bowen. We are following some good leads. And we believe that this matter is a matter that once we continue along the trajectory that we're on, we should bring this to resolution very soon. Bowen was a teacher at the Charles Saunders High School in the Bahamas. She attended the St. Rose's High School here in Guyana. Neighbors of the woman's Summer Street Nassau village were questioned by police. Police were only told that neighbors heard screams coming from the woman's apartment Thursday morning, but they did not inquire since they thought it was just a domestic dispute. And on the international scene, the 36-year reign of Zimbabwe's 92-year-old president, Robert Mugabe, could finally be coming to an end without his approval. There have been challenges, opposition and violence, but Mugabe has always known how to deal with dissent and stay in power frequently using brutal tactics. But now all the key forces that would have kept him in power and some new ones are turning against him. We pick up the story in this CNN report. The protests now happen every week. The response from Harare's police, always brutal. Here a tear gas canister is lobbed into a packed commuter van. For 36 years, Robert Mugabe has depended on the police to enforce his rule to crush dissent. But the dissent is now building from within. I think people don't know what's actually happening uh, in Zimbabwe. Particularly. This veteran police officer has taken an enormous risk just to meet with us. We're concealing his identity for his protection. We thought to beat up everyone who was there. But that's not the initial instruction that we've been given. It came later on. So the politicians are ordering the police to beat up protesters. Is that the case? That I believe. Politicians from a regime that he says will stop at nothing to stay in power. 
A government spokesman told CNN that it's not the case. He denies that Mugabe's party is ordering the police to attack protesters. They say the protesters are out to damage property. That's news and sports, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadostoday.bb. Also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We are also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you, as well as Channel 99 on Flow TV and Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day.